Well, Nyan. In right field, it will be Bobby Bonds. At second base, Don Mason. In center field, Willie Mays. At first base, Willie McCovey. Catching Dick Dietz. Left field, Ken Henderson. Third base, Tito Fuentes. Shortstop, Hal Lanier. And pitching, Ron Bryant. For the Chicago Cubs. At shortstop, Don Kessinger. At second base, Glenn Becker. Left field, Billy Williams. Third base, Ron Sato. First base, Ernie Banks. Right field, Jim Hickman. Catching, Randy Hunley. In center field, Don Young. And the pitcher, Jim Colbert. Andy Olson will be behind the plate. Al Barlick at first, Ed Vargo at second, and John Kibler will be at third. Here come the Cubs on the field, and listen to this screen. where he had a record of six and five only to give the Cubs a little depth in their bullpen but in desperation they started him against Philadelphia and he was the winning pitcher although he did not go all the way and with Kenny Holtzman in the service for a couple of weeks Goldburn has been elevated to a starting position today the Giants a little thin and starting pitchers so Ron Bryant is getting his start. So we got a couple of rookies fresh out of the Coast League who may be your stars of tomorrow. up by Colburn and he delivers to the plate and Bonds takes high for ball one. Ernie Banks drifts back to play a little more deeply at first. Colburn throws. Bonds hits a high drive to deep right field waiting for it. 
is Jim Hickman, and he is under it for half a minute. Don Mason will be the Giants' batter. 2.15 batting up. Friends, there's a bright, sunny island calling you. It's Chevron Island under the standard sign, where the welcome is warm and the service friendly. Wind up and pitch to Mason. Blow it inside, says Andy Olson for ball one. Gaylord Perry will work for the Giants tomorrow. Mason slaps the fly ball down the left field line. Billy Williams goes back for that one. Makes the catch for out number two. Willie Mays will be the Giants batter. Willie hit the ball hard yesterday. Had a double and a single. Mays gets on. Willie McCovey will be up. Coleman ready to throw. He winds and delivers to Mays. Line drive foul shot down the left field line. We're going to have to stay right on top of the microphone today. And on occasions we may appear to be yelling to you. But in order to get anything into the microphone at all, that's the way we have to do because the, Don't broad yell at me. the broadcast booth here is very live. Here's the pitch. Mays takes the slider. Lined up by Colburn, the pitch to Mays is swung on and grounded his shortstop. Kessinger scoops, lobs easily in the side of the ball. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on, and at the end of one half inning, there is no score. You know, friends, throughout history, men have searched for the fountain of youth. Well, now a fountain of youth for car engines has been discovered on Chevron Island. New Chevron Custom 10W40 motor oil. A remarkable technical achievement for the men at Chevron Standard Research. An oil that actually makes car engines run young again. New Chevron Custom 10W40 clings to moving parts even after your car has been standing overnight. And it's so rugged it won't break down in the hottest freeway driving. Discover the fountain of youth for your car. Chevron Custom 10W40 motor oil at Chevron Island. Under the standard oil sign. Looking for a friendly change of scene? Come to Chevron Island, near to where you are. A friendly kind of island with fresh spirit for your car. An island just for you, under the standard sign. Young Ron Bryant, who uh, saved a game for the Giants on Saturday in St. Louis, ready to face Kessinger, Beckert, and Billy Williams. The Cubs have the best winning percentage in the National League. Get noisy. They introduce Don Kessler. An exceptional putter, left handed or right handed. Overall batting average of 297 takes Bryant's fastball high for ball one. First big league start for Ron Bryant. 
The left-hander from Davis throws to Kessinger. Strike called, and Kessinger doesn't like it. One and one delivery to Kessinger. I Bryant's been coming in high. That's ball two on a strike. Glenn Beckert, a great bundle of energy up there next. Bryant's two one pitch to Kessinger. High and inside. Ball three. One account. Bryant fires to the plate. Kessinger bluffs the butt. Takes ball four. Missed somewhere. So Kessinger is on, and the batter will be Glenn Beck. We've got some friends here, Bob Moffat and family from Hayward, California, here today. Beckert with a batting average of 295. Here's the go to first base. The Cubs, a hit and run in ball club, particularly with this combination. Young Ron Bryant looks at first base, delivers to Beckert. Curl strike on the inside corner. What a beautiful day this one is. A bit of a breeze off the lake, which is keeping things cool and does not favor the hitters, although it's not of gale proportion such as we had yesterday. Bryant throws to first. The runner gets back. One delivery. The pitch for Bryant. A curveball is inside for a ball. The count of one and one. Billy Williams will pop. Bryant looks at first. Throws the plate. Kessinger goes. The ball is snuffed down the third base line. Deeks is up with it, throws to McCovey just in time. It is no sacrifice. That brings up Billy Williams, who broke up yesterday's ball game with a single in the bottom of the tenth inning. Williams is hitting, and he is hitting now. He has a 19-game hitting streak going. Left-handers or right-handers make very little difference. Has 202 total bases. But what is comes over to say something to Ron Bryant. Number 26 waiting. The lead at second by Kessinger. Ron Sato will follow. And here's the stretch by Bryant. He delivers to Williams. It swung on and grounded to Mason at second. He throws Williams out at first for out number two. And Ron Sato, who hit four ropes yesterday, will be the batter. Brought his average from 299 to 304. Our 
Ernie Banks will follow. Sano got his 22nd home run yesterday. He has 87 runs by the end. Willie McCovey, the giant leader, with 82. Kessinger will bother Bryant as much as he possibly can over at third. Julian Malfitano yells that Bryant walked, but he didn't. Now Bryant on the mound. Keeps the ball in the glove. Now throws to Sato. Swing and a miss on the fastball. Strike one. For one is fairly deep at third and guarding the line. Lanier over in the hole. Bryant into the windup to pitch to Sato. A bouncer knocked down by Dietz. They hold Kessinger at third. Andy Olson wants to take a look at the baseball. Bryant throws it to him. One wind up the pitch. Sato fouls it away upstairs. Today's crowd in Chicago will put the Giants' road attendance over one million. The Giants consistently number one or two in leading the league in travel attendance. Shirt sleeve crowd at Wrigley Field. Enjoying rather unseasonable weather. Cool at this time of year. Here's the pitch to Sato. Swung on and drilled with the winner. He is up with an over to McCovey in time. The side is retired. With no runs, no hits, no errors. One left on, and at the end of one inning, we have no score. Do you get the feeling that you Warm, sunny island at every turn. Well, you're not imagining the thing. The spirit of Chevron Island is everywhere. Come to Chevron Island, near to where you are. Everywhere under the red, white, and blue of the standard oil sign. Come to Chevron Island. Chevron Island, exciting, friendly, a welcome change of scene for you and your car. Come to Chevron Island. You'll find it everywhere in the West, under the standard sun. Willie McCovey will lead off. Willie has 299 career home runs. Cubs do not shift against him with one exception. The shortstop will play closer to second base. Now Sato will play wide of third. And the pitch by Coburn to McCovey, a high curve outside for ball one. The bye-bye baby Bonanza inning will be the top of the fifth inning when the Giants are batting. The one and no delivery. Low curve, low and outside, ball two. The 2-0 pitch. That's in there for a call strike. McCovey taking that one all the way. Didn't even lift the bat off the shoulder.
batting 321. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit deep to right field, and there goes Tellett, 5-5, five, five, baby. It's number 300 for Willie McCovey. Willie McCovey with a line shot into the right field bleacher. Put the Giants ahead, one to nothing, number 300 in his career. Juan, uh, did he cut at that ball at all? It just appeared that he, he kind of flicked at it. Well, he just went out and got it. It looked like it was a low pitch. Get it up to him too much, but he's got that smooth swing, something like uh, I said. Yeah. That's why you're up in the broadcasting booth. Here's the windup and pitch to Deets. Low for ball one. Well, he used to say the same thing about me. He didn't swing at that pitch at all, did he? Uh, no, that's that was great. Back to the dugout. Sure didn't. 230 is Deets batting average. Colburn winds and throws again. And that's a strike call on the inside corner, one and one. Here's the one and one delivery. Strike two called, a slider over the outside corner. Now the one two pitch. Deep swings and misses on a high fastball. Strike three. Question What's exciting as the sound of native drums, warm as a Polynesian smile? Friendly as a hula girl, you guessed it. Chevron Island, under the standard sign. Kenny Henderson, the Giants hitter now. Batting average of 218. The pitch on the way to Kenny. Dribble foul to the left side of the plate. Strike one. Henderson has been meeting the ball. They've gone mostly to the left side. He swings and misses on this one. Strike two. The 0-2 pitch. Henderson swings, lines it down the left field line. Base of his day fair. And it's a foul ball, says John Kibler, the umpire at third. And Ozzie Virgil is down to insist that the ball hit inside the line, but Kibler said it didn't, and it'll go just as a foul ball. So Henderson, who had run around the bases, thinking that he had a fair ball into the left field corner, has to come back. And try it again. Home plate dusted off. Tito Fuentes will follow against Jim Colburn. Henderson has a strike left. The Giants lead one to nothing. Here's the pitch on the way to Henderson. Grounded to the right side where Becker takes a big high school hop and throws to first base for out number two. And Pito Fuentes will step up now for the Giants. Batting average of 274. McCovey's home run, in addition to being number 300, was his... Uh, 32nd of the year, and he has 83 runs batted in. The pitch to Tito, a check swing, low for ball one. Randy Huntley wants him to check with the umpire at third to see if he swung, and Andy Olson refuses to do so. the pitch to Tito. High curveball inside for ball two and no strike. The 
the 2-0 pitch. Tito wraps the line drive base hit to left field. Billy Williams picks it up, fires it back to the infield. Hal Lanier will be the Giants' bat. A left-handed hitter who stays just under the 250 mark. A good day can put him over the 250 mark. He's at 248 now. Ron Bryant will follow. The pitch to Lanier, low and inside from Jim Colburn for out number for ball one. That'll be one of the biggest weekday crowds in Cubs history. Here's the pitch. It's outside for ball two. Uh, we do not know whether it might be Kitts Day or something of that sort. A lot of boys and girls here today, along with adults, but there are at least 40,000 people in the park. A go to first, and for what is his backhand? Colburn looks at first, throws to Lanier, Hal swings and fouls it back. Two balls and a strike in the top of the second inning. The Giants have scored on McCovey's home run. The one is leads away. And the pitch to Lanier is fouled away again for two and two. Andy Olson, the left-hander, throws one back to the pitcher's box. Two stretch. Go to first, but one is back in. Here's the stretch by Colburn. For one is goes. Lanier takes high and inside to throw to second base. Tito is out by about 10 feet and the side is returned. Giants one run, two hits, no errors, nobody left on, and as we move to the bottom of inning number two, the score is one to nothing in favor of the Giants. Folks, would you like to relive California's rich and colorful history? One way you can is by visiting Fort Ross, where the Russians first settled in 1811. Or you can journey to Monterey and enter the old U.S. Custom House and imagine that four-masted schooners are still anchored in the bay. Or you can travel south to San Diego, where California was first settled in 1769, 200 years ago. Wherever you travel in California, there's a way to double the enjoyment of your trip. To commemorate this great state's bicentennial, Standard Oil Company of California is giving away, free with purchase, a series of original watercolor prints of historic sites, 42 scenes in all. Every week at all Chevron dealer standard stations, you'll receive a new set of prints. They're perfect for binding, so you can refer to them as you travel. Start your collection today. Enjoy 200 years of your historic golden state, your California, from Standard Oil Company of California. Now, Mr. Chicago, Ernie Banks will lead off. 264 average, 79 runs batted in, and 15 home runs. Right-handed hitter against the left-handed pitcher, Bryant, who survived the first inning, even though he walked the leadoff batter. The pitch on the way to Banks, high and outside, ball one. Jim Hickman will follow, then Randy Huntley. Here 
Here's the next delivery to Ernie Banks. High ball two. Two and oh to number 14. And the 2 0 pitch to Banks. A swing and a miss. Strike one. Bryant is a lot like Bill Hands in the fact that, according to the players, he is sneaky fast. He doesn't go through a lot of gyrations out there. He throws the next pitch, and Banks swings and sends a high drive to right field. Should be routine for Bonds. He's waiting. That's out number one, and we'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. <laughs> One to nothing. Jim Hickman is the batter. 209 average. Here's the pitch to Hickman. He taps it right back to Bryant, who's off the mound in a hurry. Throws to first base, threw it into the runner, but McCovey crossed the bag in time. And it's out number two. Randy Hundley with an average of 273. That baseball is thrown out. right-handed hitter. And here's the pitch to Bryant. There's a curve that hangs high on outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes in the, in the next windup. The pitch. That's inside for ball two and no strikes. Wind up by the left-hander Ron Bryant. The pitch to Randy Hundley. Bounded slowly towards shortstop. Lanier one hand it throws to first. And the Cubs are out in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. And at the end of two, the Giants lead one to nothing. And now, fans, let's see who will be Paul Spiegel's Roos Atkins guest. My guest today is Nancy Lanier, wife of the flashy Giants infielder Hal Lanier. Nancy... I know that Hal is the son of a former National League pitching star, Max Lanier, so I was wondering, um, uh, do you come from an athletic family, too? Oh, Paul, I guess you could say I come from a long line of spectators, sports enthusiasts, but until Hal, we could never lay claim to any greats in sports. And, and now you can. Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> You know, it's never been more fun, girl, watching. The young fashions today are just so darn surprising. And that's what the Roos Atkins In Focus concept is all about. You'll find youthful, swinging, in-focus fashions in every section of every Roos Atkins women's department. Here's a sample. The ultimate in suede coats with a detachable mink collar and a zip-on leather collar. And this great coat is at a special Roos Atkins In Focus price of $119. So, gals, get with the In Focus look at Roos Atkins. For my sake. Al Lanier was batting when Tito Pawanis was thrown out, so Lanier will lead off, going to the top of inning number three, and that's the story for Lonson. Well, the Chicago's Wrigley Field beginning to look a little like Stadium in New York with all the signs out here as the 
They say on the signs we've got Cub fever, and that's exactly what's going around here with the Cubs leading the Eastern Division. Of course, it's great. Anyone that says that baseball is having its difficulties should be here in this ballpark today. Al Lanier facing Jim Colburn, a rookie right-hander. Pitch bounded to the right side. Banks wide at first. Has it. Throws to Colburn. Covering in time. And Lanier is retired. For out number one. And it'll bring up Ron Bryant. Bryant has been up just once. He struck out that time. Left-hand batter. Pitch to Bryant, hit high in the air to second base. Beckert shading his eyes, comes in now at the edge of the grass to make the catch for the second out. Two men down. Word for you gals out there, get in focus now with Bruce Atkins' double light suede coat, detachable ink collar for dress wear and zip on leather collar for casual wear. Bruce Atkins in focus, low price, just $119. Bobby Bonds, who flied to right his first time. As Colburn delivers to Bobby, he bluffs the bunt, takes a strike on the inside. As far as discussing attendance goes, and whether baseball is sagging or not, there has been around a million people in attendance in baseball in the Bay Area. Swing and a fair ball down the left field line by third base. Bounds away from Williams. Bobby Bonds will go to second and starts to go to third and changes his mind and goes back to the second base. Bonds just hit a soft curving line drive down the left field line that just hit fair and it bounded off the base of the wall down there and kicked away from Williams. Bonds was going to get two on it anyway, but there was a possibility he could get three as it got by, but didn't get far enough away from Williams for Bonds to go to third. So with two down, the Giants get their third hit, and Don Mason will be up here fly to left his first time. Colburn takes the stretch as Bonds leads. Swing and a line drive base into center field. Here comes Bonds around third. Here's a throw towards the plate. No, it's to second base, and Bonds scores easily. As the throw went to second. Don Young came up, acted as though he was going to throw towards the plate, but threw to Kessinger, covering it second. Mason single drives in the Giants' second run. And Willie Mays will be up here. That was a solid line drive to center. Mays grounded to short his first time. The Giants lead by a score of two to nothing. Swings and misses strike one. All on one count. Mason at first. The run in. Giants lead two to nothing. Mays takes a breaking pitch for a strike and it's 0 and 2. is in front of Mays, 0-2, with two down, a run in, Mason at first. The right-hander delivers the Mays, sidearm fastball high for a ball, 1-2. and two. Mays hit the ha- ball hard yesterday. Had a double and a single to show for it, and an RBI. Mason with his lead. Pitch to Mays. Fouled away to the right. One and two count to Willie. McCovey's 300th home run of his career in the second inning. 
a two-out double by Bonds and a single by Mason. The Giants have two runs. The Cubs none. Colburn stretch. Mason bluffs from first. The pitch to May. Swung on. Line drive. Base hit into left center field. Over to field it is Williams. Mason stumbles as he rounds second. And so goes back into second base. And the batter now will be Willie McCovey. So May sings a solid single to the left center. That one just didn't get through. Williams was able to get over and field it. Keep it from going to the wall. McCovey tagged one into the right field seat his first time up. Mays has now hit safely in six consecutive games. Kessinger bluffs Mason back into second. The pitch to McCovey. A breaking pitch for a strike. Bob fell high. McCovey was taking all the way and might be sorry he did. That pitch was right over the middle. A slider or a curve. Breaking pitch anywhere that was about belt high over the middle. Don Notterbart starts throwing in the Cubs bullpen. Pitch low to McCovey for a ball. It's one and one. Giants two. Cubs nothing. Mason at second. Mays at first. Two out. McCovey the batter. Colburn stretches for the 1-1 pitch. A let-up. Swung on a drilled foul into the Giants' dugout, and they come streaking out of there. McCovey just couldn't wait long enough. you got to give two people credit. Hundley for calling for the pitch, and Colburn for being man enough to throw it. And it was a good one. It was a slow curve that was down around the knees. McCovey just couldn't wait long enough to foul it off, so... Colburn is in front of Willie, one and two. Right-hander delivers. Swung on, a high fly ball to short right center. Don Young with the sunglasses down and makes the catch from the side of the retired. One run, three hits, no errors, two runners left on. And as we go to the bottom of the third, it's the Giants two and the Cubs nothing. You know, if they ever change women's fashions back to look-alike clothes, I may consider suicide or a retreat to the Himalayas. Never has it been more fun to be a girl watcher. It seems to me that you gals are having lots more fun being girls. It's the surprise, the variety that make the young fashions today so darn much fun. And that's what the Roos Atkins In Focus concept is all about. You'll find youthful, swinging, in-focus fashions in every section of every Roos Atkins women's department. From coats and dresses clear through to accessories and shoes. Here's a sample of how to be in focus the Roos Atkins way. What's newer than suede right now? Well, Roos Atkins has the ultimate in suede coats. A double life coat that comes with both a detachable mink collar for dress occasions and a zip-on leather collar for casual wear. It's the kind of coat that looks sensational to all the men in your life. Better still, it's now at a very special in focus price of $119. So, gals, for my sake, get with the in-focus look at Roos Atkins. It's cold in the Himalayas. Don Nottabart continues to throw in the cut bullpen. I don't know whether Leo DeRocher definitely decided to... Pinch hit for Colbert already, or we'll just pinch hit for him in case Don Young gets off. Young, the leadoff man. Don was really taken apart by the roaster in New York when he misjudged a couple of fly balls. The roaster really chewed him out. Had Young in tears after the game. In fact, Ron Sato got on him, too, and then Ron uh, uh, apologized later. Right hand better take time for a ball, 1-0. and Said he was sorry that he had blamed uh, Young for losing the ball game. But it's bound to hurt a young ball player, especially if his name is Young. Swing and a foul ball off to the right. It's, uh, ball on a strike. 
right hand batting young, hitting 234 with four home runs and 23 RBIs. Just broke that bat going back to the Cubs dugout. League baseball must lose some of its glamour for a rookie when the manager chews him out after a game. Ball on a strike. Outfield is shading young to the left. Ron Bryant, the rookie left-hander, deals off. The let up is butted down the third base side. Twenties will let it go, and it's going to stay fair. The base hit. Tito did the only thing he could. He let it roll, hoping it would go foul. It did not. It stayed fair. And it goes to the base hit, so that's the first hit. The kind of coat that looks sensational to all the men in your life. Better still, it's now at a very special in-focus price of $119. So, gals, for my sake, get with the in-focus look at Roos Atkins. It's cold in the Himalayas. Audubard continues to throw in the Cubs' bullpen. I don't know whether Leo DeRocher has definitely decided to pinch hit for Colbert already or will just pinch hit for him in case Don Young gets on. Young, the leadoff man. Don really taken apart by DeRosser in New York when he misjudged a couple of fly balls. DeRosser really chewed him out. Had Young in tears after the game. In fact, Ron Santo got on him too, and then Ron uh, uh, apologized later. Right hand better take time for a ball 1-0. He said he was sorry that he had blamed Young for losing the ball game to hurt a young ball player, especially if his name is Young. Swinging a foul ball off to the right. Ball on a strike. Right hand batting Young, hitting 234 with four home runs and 23 RBIs. Just broke that bat going back to the Cubs dugout. Baseball must lose some of its glamour for a rookie when the manager chews him out after a game. Ball on a strike. Outfield is shading Young to the left. Ron Bryant, the rookie left-hander, deals off. The let up is butted down the third base side. What is will let it go, and it's going to stay fair. The base hit. Tito did the only thing he could. He let it roll, hoping it would go foul. It did not. It stayed fair. And it goes to the base hit, so that's the first hit of Bryant. And Jim Colburn will stay in the contest. Colburn, a right-hand batter. He's been up twice without a hit. Undoubtedly up here to sacrifice. He turns the butt, fouls it off, strike one. Rube Walker, the third base coach, comes in to say something to him. One count. Bryant looking in now for the 
sign as Young leads from first. Takes his stretch. The pitch is taken for strike two as Colburn started to bunt, pulled the bat back, and it's low and two. One is at third base, really crowding in on top. Finn McCovey breaking in from first. They will proceed a little more cautiously now with two strikes on him, but probably still figure that he'll probably uh, will be trying to lay the ball down. Two to nothing. The Giants lead. We're in the bottom of the third. Young is let off with a bunt single. Colburn turns the bunt again and fouls it, and he's out on strike. So Bryant gets his first strike out. And the batter now is Kessinger. Kessinger, a switch batter, batting right-handed, walked his first time. Then Bryant got Beckert, Williams, and Sato without the ball being hit out of the infield. Kessinger facing Bryant with Young at first and one out. Bryant goes to first, not in time. Young strides farther off first base now, apparently figuring he has Bryant's move figured as Kessinger takes a strike on one. One count to Kessinger. Dates with the sign, and the target as Bryant takes the stretch. Sets, looks at first, comes to the plate with a curve. Bounded to 20, who short out it, throws the second for one. Mason throw to first in time and a double play. No runs on one hit, no errors, and no one left on. At the end of three, the score, the Giants two and the Cubs nothing. Well, there's plenty of baseball action coming up at Candlestick Park. There's Davis and Sacramento Day, their annual outings at Candlestick Park and the Giants play St. Louis on the next homestand. Friday night, August 8th, is Davis Family Night. And Ron Bryant, who's pitching out here today from Davis, and all his fans can be out there to see him. They can get ticket information from the Davis Chamber of Commerce. Sunday, August 10th, is Sacramento Day at Candlestick Park. Baseball fans in the Sacramento area can get their tickets through the local Chamber of Commerce in Sacramento. Don't forget there'll be a big home run hitting contest uh, preceding that Sunday game also. In action around the rest of the National League, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Houston, doubleheader. Los Angeles at Pittsburgh, a doubleheader. Montreal's at Cincinnati. Houston at New York for a doubleheader. San Diego at St. Louis. In the American League, the Yankees play at Oakland, Baltimore at Kansas City, Washington at Seattle, the White Sox at Cleveland, Boston at California, Detroit at Minnesota. Detroit at Minnesota, they will play two. And the Chicago White Sox Cleveland game, a doubleheader. Dick Dietz will lead off the Giants fourth. Dick struck out his first time, facing right-hander Jim Colburn. Two to nothing, the Giants lead. As Colburn delivers the Dietz, high with a fastball for ball one. It's a beautiful day in Chicago. Breaking, but it's good, and it's one and one. Ball and a strike to Dick Deep. The infield backed up, and the outfield deep. Colburn whistles in the next one. It's high for ball two. Deep Henderson and 20s against 
Colburn in the fourth. Colburn's pitch, a let up, bounded to third base. Fair ball. Sato takes his time, throws the first off the base, and Deets is safe at first base. You know what Sato was doing over there? He must have juggled the ball on his glove trying to get it out, but time he threw to first base. His throw was off the bag. Banks tried to make the tag and did not get deep. It'll be called an error on Sato. Kenny Henderson is the batter. Deets at first with no one out. Henderson grounded out to second after barely missing extra bases with a line drive that went fouled on the left field line. He checks and takes a strike on one. Henderson now looks at Ozzie Virgil. Deets at first base, nobody out. A throwing error by Santa. Swing and a foul ball off to the left. It's 0 2. Colburn stretch, deep lead. The 0 2 pitch just outside, 1 and 2. Henderson batting left-handed against the right-hand pitching of Jim Colburn. Neitz does not get a very big lead at first. One-two pitch. Inside, almost hit him with that one, and it's two and two. Colburn appears to have a pretty good fastball. Fast, whether it moves or not is the question. Can't really tell that from up here. Two and two count to Kenny Henderson. Colburn's pitch fouled away. Got that one in a good spot. Low and inside. Henderson had a good rip at it, but there's not too much you can do with a good fastball down there. Tough to handle. So Kenny's probably happy that he was able to just get that much of it. Pitch to Henderson, a changeup is outside for a ball. Three and two. I don't know if Dietz will be going here. He's not going to dazzle anybody with his speed, but he goes. Pitch is swung on and popped up towards second base. Dietz will have to hustle back in, and it's Kessinger to make the catch on the ball. Henderson pops up to shortstop right behind the pitcher's mound. Deets got back to first. Bruce Atkins has everything for you fashion conscious gals to keep you in focus like a suede coat. A detachable mink collar for dress occasions and zip on leather collar for casual wear. Only $119 at Bruce Atkins, so get in focus now. Get that mink off my collar. Hito Fuente swings and bounds one to the right side. Becker charges in, lobs the first in time. Fuente's retired as Deets goes to second. Slow topper towards the hole, and Becker is able to feel it. Got his man is up to Hal Lanier now. First base open. We'll see if they pitch to Lanier or put him on and concentrate on the pitcher. Randy Hundley goes out to talk to his pitcher, Jim Colburn. Dates at second base. Two 
two down. And Lanier is up here, grounded out to bank this first time, and they're going to pitch to Lanier, whether they will try to make him go for a bad pitch or now we'll have to wait and see that also. Curveball is a strike. All in one. So they're pitching to Lanier with first base open. Hal trying to make it costly to him as he stands up here. Dates moves away from second. Lanier swings and pops it up. Went for a bad pitch. High and inside. And Santo comes down the line to make the catch for the third out. No run. No hit. One error. One left. And at the end of three and a half, it's the Giants two, the Cubs. No. And now back to Paul Spiegel and his delightful Roos Atkins guest. I'm talking today with lovely Nancy Lanier. Uh, you've told me before that you go horseback riding quite often. Uh, what kind of riding clothes do you wear? Mostly around here, just uh, old clothes, dungarees, old shirts, things like that. But suppose it's kind of a fashionable ride. Do you dress well, up? Well, yes, I did have an opportunity to go to a dude ranch this year in Arizona and found that I needed some nicer clothes, and I found a very lovely pair of riding pants at Ruth Atkins. Oh, good girl. You know, it's never been more fun, girl, watching. The young fashions today are just so darn surprising. And that's what the Ruth Atkins In Focus concept is all about. You'll find youthful, swinging, in-focus fashions in every section of every Ruth Atkins women's department. Here's a sample. The ultimate in suede coats with a detachable mink collar and a zip-on leather collar. And this great coat is at a special Ruth Atkins in-focus price of $119. So, gals, get with the in-focus look at Ruth Atkins. Ron Bryant. Loosening up, we'll have to pitch to Glenn Becker, Billy Williams, and Ron Sato starting his second go-around through the Cub lineup. He got Kessinger to hit into a double play. Kessinger looking at him for the second time. Well, Becker, who was thrown out by Deep. Comes up to the plate, a right-hand batter. That's two runs on five hits. The Cubs, no run, one, one hit. Beckert, Williams, and Sato. Dates with a sign for... Bounded slowly towards third. Twenties charges. Short hop. Throws to first. Gets him. Four out number one. Ball top down the third base side. Twenty. And he charges. Got his man. Billy Williams grounded the second his first time. And left hander against left hander in this situation. He hit the ball hard, but right at Don Mason. Works to this left hand batter and curves him high and inside for a ball, 1 0. Oh. 1 0 oh pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. He ran that one by him high and inside. Ball and a strike. Bottom of the fourth, two to nothing, the Giants lead. Brad works one and one to Williams. Swung on a high fly ball out to right field. Bobby Bond with the glasses down, drifting under this one. Makes the catch for the second out. We'll pause for station identification at the Golden West Radio Network. This is Jeff Castle, the KSFO News Director. For the most accurate coverage of news as it happens, set your dial at... Two out. Dietz goes out to talk to Bryant as Ron Sato comes up. Sato 
Bono grounded to third his first time. Two down, bases empty in the bottom of the fourth. The Giants two, the Cubs nothing. Bryant works to Sato. Swing and a miss at the fastball, strike one. Concentrate more on getting it over the plate than throwing it hard. 
is two on pitch to bank. One on ground to third. Twenties will throw to second for the force and the side is retired. So in the fourth, no run, one hit, no errors, and a runner left on. And at the end of four innings, it's the Giants two, the Cubs nothing. And now back again to Paul Spiegel and his lovely Roos Atkins guest. My guest today is Nancy Lanier, wife of Giants infielder Hal Lanier. Nancy, you've told me, and I'm delighted to hear it, that you like to shop at Roos Atkins. What do you particularly like about our stores? Well, Paul, I guess it's the wide variety of clothes, the, the quality of the clothes, so the fact that you don't see yourself coming and going, and the fact that I have a charge account at Ruth Atkins. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you. You know, it's never been more fun girl watching. The young fashions today are just so darn surprising. And that's what the Ruth Atkins In Focus concept is all about. You'll find youthful, swinging In Focus fashions in every section of every Ruth Atkins women's department. Coats, dresses, accessories, shoes. Here's a sample. The ultimate in suede coats with a detachable mink collar and a zip-on leather collar. And this great coat is at a special Ruth Atkins In Focus price of $119. So, gals... Get with the in-focus look at Bruce Atkins, for my sake. Inning number five, the Bye Bye Baby Bonanza inning coming up. And uh, there's a young lady in a very nice outfit. A sort of halter, uh, halter sunsuit idea, a young blonde lady. And every time she walks by in front of the group in front of us, it really brings them alive. It even brought me alive. What are you talking about? <laughs> Let's play Bye Bye Baby Bonanza. This is the top of the fifth inning. Ron Bryant will bat and Bill Hu will bat for. Ron will be batting for Daniel Rabbit of 10656 Larry Way and Cupertino. And Bryant takes the strike. Bryant's not much of a hitter. Here's the pitch to him. He swings on a slider and misses for strike two. Bobby Bonds, who has delivered one bye-bye baby winner, will be the next batter. But right now it's Ron Bryant with a count of two strikes, and he takes high for ball one. The Giants leading two to nothing. The 1-2 pitch to Bryant is swung on and bounded high behind short. The mound is picked up by Kessinger, thrown to first not in time. Bryant beats it out for his first big league hit. It was a high chopper that sailed over the head of the pitcher, and by the time Kessinger could short hop it, Bryant was on. Who's Bobby Bonds hitting for? For Jim Anderson, a 33-72 Zish drive in San Jose. And remember, Bobby Barnes has already delivered one $1,200 bye-bye baby Bonanza home run. He's up to try it again. He is flying to right, and he has doubled the left. Bryant's hit is the Giants' sixth. He's on at first base. And we sincerely doubt, due to his inexperience as a base runner, that there will be any attempt to sacrifice him along. The Cubs don't think so either. Here's the pitch by Coburn. A line drive down the left field line. Base hit going into the corner. Ron Bryant will go at least to third. The ball kicks away from Williams. They're holding him at third. It's a double for Barnes, and the Giants are in business with Don Mason, the batter. So there's no bonanza there, but it helps the Giants, and now another batter will be Don Mason. Don will be batting for Myrtle... W. Brinkley of 1260 John Street in Salinas. There's a conference on the mound. As Don Mason will be swinging for Myrtle W. Brinkley. single to center his last time. Don Nottabart throws in the bullpen. The Giants with a chance to pick up a flock now. 
Bryant at third, Bonds at second. Here's the pitch. Low and outside to Mason for ball one. Jim Colburn, C-O-L-B-O-R-N, the pitcher for the Cubs. The Giants out hitting the Cubs 7-2. Randy Hunley with a target. Colburn throws. Mason swings on a curve. And it's one and one. Mason drove in his eighth run of the season, his last at bat, with a clean single to center. Bryant with a short lead at third. Here's the pitch to Mason. Don swings and taps it back to the box. They hold the runners. He threw to first base barely in time. Mason came within an eyelash of beating it out, and Willie Mays will be the Giants' batter. And Russ Mays will be batting for Irma Addison of 311 Rutledge Street in San Francisco. Has not delivered any bye-bye baby socks. And he's up here to swing now. He'd like number 597 of his career. First base is open. They will pitch to him. What McCovey do up next? Here's the windup and the pitch to Mays. Low and outside on a breaking pitch for ball one. Two to nothing, Giants. Bryant at second. Bonds with his second double of the day. It's Bryant at third, and Bonds at second. Colburn delivers to Mays. Mays takes outside off the glove of Holly, but no advance. Ball two, no strikes. And Mays asks for a look at the baseball. Asks Andy Olson to examine it. It's allowed to remain in play. Kessinger comes in now to say something to Colbert. Twelve hundred bucks riding on each pitch to Willie Mays. And if Willie were to hit one, then it'd be a thousand riding on each pitch to Willie McCovey. Jim Hickman, uh, rather Don Young, deep in right center. In left center, rather. Coleman to the windup. The pitch to Mays is strike one call with the knees on the inside. Rich Nye has gotten up along with Don Nottabart now. No, that's Hank Aguirre. They want somebody to pitch to McCovey, probably. We'll see what happens. Colburn delivers. May swings and misses on his fight. Two and two. Colburn's really bowing his neck out there. Must be some experience for Bryant to be a base runner in a big league ball game. Here's Colburn facing Mays. He has a two and two count. He throws to Mays, who taps it foul down the third baseline. He didn't have much of a cut at that one at all. The Cubs are playing their infield in about two steps. Even with a count of two and two, number 24 trying to deliver. Colburn facing Mays. Takes his sign from Hundley. Now Mays backs out. This is the top of the fifth inning. Giants two to nothing. Now the trip to the Rosen bag. Here's the two and two to Mays. High for ball three and the count is three and two. balls, two strikes. Jim Colburn winds. He throws to Mays. Low for ball four, and they're loaded up. So Mays walks, and that will bring up Willie McCovey, as Hank Aguirre has been loosening in the bullpen. 
McCovey tags his 32nd home run. Here comes Rube Walker. And, Bill, that gives you a lot of time to tell who McCovey will be swinging for. Well, Willie McCovey will be batting for Mrs. Ida Coleman of 1790 St. Helena or St. Helena Street in Seaside, California. So McCovey will bat for Mrs. Ida Coleman. And they're going to pull kind of a dirty trick here by putting in a left-handed pitcher. They call for the... I'm waiting to see. They're calling for Hank Aguirre. Aguirre has won one while losing none and has had no saves. He's worked in 33 and two-thirds innings. So we'll reconstruct the inning as the Giants have a chance of getting a bundle. Bryant beat out a hit over the mound, a high chopper. Bond sent him to third. Mason bounded back to the box and almost beat it out as the runners held. And then Mays went to a 3-2 count and walked. Colburn gets a nice ovation as he leaves the field. Don Nottebart continues to throw in the bullpen, and it could be that Aguirre's only in to pitch to one batter, and that batter, Willie McCovey, who has hit a home run and flied to center field. Aguirre, a real veteran, had great years in the American League and has been mostly a spot pitcher in the National League. And was a free agent when the Cubs signed him this year because they needed a left-handed pitcher to do just this, to come in in a spot to try to get out one left-handed hitter. McCovey and Sato in a battle for the RBI leadership. Well, don't count Ernie Banks out. McCovey with 32 home runs and... 83 runs batted in. Santo has 87. Once again, Bill. Who's listening with bated breath long about now? Well, this is Ida Coleman, 1790 St. Helena Street in Seaside. They brought out a jacket to put on Ron Bryant. Barnes is at second. Mays is at first. Aguirre to pitch to McCovey. Now winds and throws the pitch. He goes out in front of a curveball and fouls it off. Dick Deeks will follow. Aguirre throws a lot of weird breaking stuff. And you can just bet he's not going to throw McCovey a fastball. Number 34, Aguirre, turns his back on home plate. The Cubs are back, hoping for the double play. Bryant down the line, looking for a wild pitch or a pass ball. Sato playing wide of third. The pitch. Aguirre caught his, caught his toe in the mound as he was delivering. And it was very close to being a balk. It's high on outside for a ball on a count of one and one. Had he held on to the ball after tripping, it would have been a ball. Mays with a big lead at first. Bryant down the line at third. The pitch to McCovey. Swung on, bounded, foul. Fast first base. So it's one ball and two strikes. Giants with a chance to harvest the bundle here. They can make things a lot easier for Ron Bryant. If McCovey and Dietz, or both of them, could connect. Kessinger now is right behind second. Aguirre with a target from Huntley. 
He winds and throws to McCovey. And strikes it. So now it's all up to Dick Teeth. And Bill? Dick Teeth will be batting for Hannah L. Menjule or Menjulet of 12348 Obrad Drive in Saratoga. So Dietz is the boy on the spot now. Uh, Gary winds and throws to Dick Dietz. Curves him low for ball one. Gary just about earned a year's pay there. Here's the pitch. It's outside to Dietz for ball two. Count of two and oh, and Dietz looks now to Ozzie Virgil to see what he is expected to do. Dietz has struck out and been safe on an error. Here's the pitch to Dietz. High and inside, ball three. will be taken at least one. Kenny Henderson to follow. The Giants lead two to nothing with the bases loaded and two down. Hank Aguirre winds and throws three and oh. The pitch to Dietz is strike one call. Now will they have him take another one and have the runners going? Or will they have him on his own? Three balls, one strike. The 3-1 pitch to Dietz. Swung on and knocked down the first baseline and goes foul. Now, the runners will be going on the 3-2 and two pitch. Ron Bryant has certainly been over at third base a long time. That might tire him out a bit. This is the top of the fifth inning. And he has worked four tough innings. Now Dietz has a count of three and two. Aguirre, who throws an occasional knuckleball, may come up with that. Mays, Bonds, and Bryant will be going. And here's the stretch. There they go. The pitch to Dietz is thrown. Well, at the plate, he's still alive. That could be the big break of the ball game, as Hundley could not hold on to that foul that hit him on the heel of the glove. Bryant wasn't very far down the line that time. Mays, Bonds, and Bryant ready to go. Two to nothing, the Giants lead. Hank Aguirre. Ready to throw to Dietz. He winds, he throws. Dietz swings and hits a routine fly ball to left field that Billy Williams grabs. The side is retired and the Giants don't score. What a job of relieving by Hank Aguirre. No bye-bye, baby Bonanza winner. Tomorrow's... Giant will be swinging for $1,300. No runs, two hits, no errors, three left. And we go to the bottom of the fifth inning as the Giants lead two to nothing. It's so comfortable, the feel of the breeze blowing in. Oh, come. 
against Ron Bryant, followed by Randy Hundley and by Don Young. Boy, that was some clutch pitching by Aguirre. You got to give him credit. They were very smart. They didn't pitch to Willie Mays. Well, they pitched around him, walking him, knowing that the left-hander was ready to come in and perhaps get out Willie McCovey. And Aguirre did just, just that and then got Dietz out. Hickman, who bounced to the box his last time, will be the back. They've got history repeats itself down below with a little cub taking a slingshot and aiming at a big giant on one of the sides. There goes one. Let's get out of here. up in the pitch. Lying on the left field line, base hit. Henderson picks it up. Young holds with a long single. And to say that they're getting familiar with Ron Bryant is uh, putting it exactly the way it should be, but remember Ron did not get any rest between innings at all, and this is his first start, and he's probably running out of gas a bit. Ted Abernathy in the bullpen. There will be a pinch hitter for Hank Aguirre. Somebody is looking for a bat. Oh, 
Suddenly, they're they're doing this to put as much heat on Bryant as they possibly can. Herbo starts throwing in the Giants' bullpen. Leo DeRocher, a keen psychologist, is taking a lot of time. a catcher will come up to act as a pinch hitter. Ken Rudolph. Rudolph has five hits for 25. A right-handed hitter. Ron Bryant looks at first base. Raise the deck, he starts throwing also. Here's the pitch to Rudolph. It's low for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Rudolph waiting. Brian delivers to Rudolph. Misses inside for ball two. And the count goes to two on King apparently has seen enough. He's looking for a sign from Larry Jansen that somebody's ready. Jansen indicates that Ron Herbal is ready. Now the 2-0 pitch on the way to Rudolph is strike one foul. R-U-D-O-L-P-H. Not to be confused with Gene Autry's famous reindeer. The 2-1 delivery by Bryant with one out. The pitch to Rudolph is inside for ball three. Three and one. Three-one stretch. Bryant steps off. Here's the pitch on the way, a fastball. They had him swinging, he fouls it back. With the count now at three and two. We'll watch the runner at first. Don Young to see if he'll be going. Young now has two out of two. Here's Bryant stretching. Young lead. And Bryant throws it first. The 3 2 stretch. The pitch, it's outside. Kessinger will be the batter with runners at first and second. And here comes Clyde King to the mound. We'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. I am carrying the government. You are my audience. I am on 9 to noon. What are you on? Don Kessinger will be the batter. King stays with his tiring young left-hander. With runners at first and second and one out, one run in. The Giants lead two to one. Kessinger is walked and hit into a double play. And he's a tough man to double up.
Kessinger's had three homers on the year. Bryant set, throws to Kessinger, a swing and a bounder down to 20. He's at third, who tags third, throws to first. Not in time for the double play. But they got the front man, and that will bring up Becker. Holding on at second. Is the uh, pitch hitter who walked, Rudolph. And Becker will be the batter. That ball was not hit sharply. For one, he did not have a chance for a double play. Beckert has bounced out twice. It's a lot to right and right center. Bonds is playing him very dangerously shallow. Bryant looks at second. He delivers to Beckert. Third ball, low for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Kessinger at first, Rudolph at second. Lanier trying to bluff the runner back to second. Bryant set. He throws. Becker swings to center field. Gonna be close at the plate. Here comes. And Mays doesn't throw anywhere. He had a great chance to get him at the plate, but he did not in the ball game. Runners at first and third. Mays has a sore arm, so that must be the reason he didn't throw. Because he had a great big chance of getting Rudolph at the plate. Billy Williams will be the batter with his score tied at two and two. Ted Abernathy will probably pitch the sixth inning. Williams with a 19-game batting streak. Bryant backs off. Chases Kessinger back to third. Bryant checks him over the shoulder. Throws to Billy Williams. A curveball has hit the base in a second. He is up with it. Throws to McCovey and the side is retired. And that kid is a cool customer. He really came through beautifully. For the Cubs, two runs on three hits, no errors, two left on. And at the end of five, we've got a tie ball game at two and two. Well, it's all tied at two and two. Both teams had chances that inning to break up the ball game. The Cubs got back in it. The Giants had a chance to break it up and failed to do so. See what inning number six brings as Ted Abernathy comes on to pitch, and here's Bill. Abernathy will be making his 43rd appearance of the year, all in relief. He's pitched a total of 63 innings, won four, lost two, been credited with three saves, has an earned on average of 2.85. Rookie Jim Colburn started for the Cubs, went four and a third innings, gave up two runs on seven hits. Walked one, struck out one. Hank Aguirre came in to strike out McCovey and get deep to fly to left with the bases loaded. Now Abernathy becomes the third pitcher for Chicago here in the top of the sixth. For the Giants, it'll be the six, seven, and eight spots in the batting order. Left fielder Kenny Henderson, third baseman Tito Fuentes, and shortstop Hal Lanier. Abernathy, the submarine delivery advocate, scrapes the ground with his right hand as he delivers the pitches. Fastball will sink. The curveball will rise. Fastball is outside of ball one. Henderson, a switch hitter, batting left-handed. Grounded to second in the second. Popped to short in the fourth. Kenny over two. Abernathy back to the plate. Fastball outside for two and oh. A two and nothing count on Ken Henderson. Giants 
Brands out hitting the Cubs seven to five. Score tied two two. Harper now these two pitch to Kenny Henderson. Fastball outside for ball three. Harper now these missed three times in the same spot, about halfway between the belt and the knees on the outside or outside of the plate. 3-0 pitch. Fastball is a called strike. Henderson started to go to first base. Has to return on the call from Andy Olson. So, Abernathy in on the count at 3-1. and one. Right hander to the plate. Fastball is inside for ball four. So, Henderson draws the walk. Abernathy walks the first man he faces. Battle will be third baseman Tito Fuentes. Single to left in the second inning. Ground to second in the fourth. Tito, another switch hitter. Batting left-handed. Henderson, a lead at first. Sano crowds in at third. Fuentes around to bunt, takes a fastball for a strike. Ed Miller from Redding, California, here in Wrigley Field today enjoying the game. Wishes to send along best wishes to all giant fans in Redding, especially those at Radio KVCV. Henderson away from first. Sano again in on the grass. Pitch the point. He swings away and fouls it at the plate. Hundley out to feel it as a rollout in fair territory. It was a foul ball. Abernathy in front of Fuente. He's 0-2. Sano still in front of the bag at third. Now backing up. We'll play about even with the bag. Outfield shading Fuentes to the left, playing him as a late swinger, as young as over in left center. Williams near the line and left, and Hickman well off the right field line and shallow. Henderson away from first. Abernathy set. The O2 pitch to Tito. A curve foul back into the screen. Count holds at 0 and 2. Abernathy's curve ball to a left handed batter. Will rise and break in to the left hander. Fastball will sink and break away from a left handed hitter. Pitch to Tito, way outside and low, dug out of the dirt by Hundley for ball one. Abernathy used to throw knuckle balls, but had some trouble with fingers and does not use it as often as he used to. Lon said watching him warm up that he did throw some as he was warming up in the bullpen. Pitch to Tito. Outside and low for ball two. So Abernathy and Fuentes go even at two and two. Kenny Henderson at first base with nobody out. Score tied 2-2 in the top of the sixth. Second of a four-game series between the Cubs and Giants from Wrigley Field for a fantastic Tuesday afternoon crowd. 2-2 pitch to Tito. Swung on and missed for strike three. Robert Nappy strikes out Fuentes for the first out, and Hal Lanier will be the Giants batter. Lanier grounded the first in the third inning and popped the third in the fourth. So Hal 0 for 2. Johnny Stevenson comes out in the on-deck circle. Frank Lindsay throwing for the Giants in the bullpen. Hundley yells something out to Abernathy, who agrees with whatever it was that Hundley said. Lanier choking up on the bat. Anderson will lead at first. Pitch to Lanier outside for ball one.
That's got a run in the second on McCovey's home run. Scored again in the third on a double by Bonds, a single by Mason. The Cubs came back to get two in the fifth to tie. The 2-2 game is wearing the top of the sixth. Pitch for Lanier. Fastball for a call strike. Lanier batting left-handed against the right-hander Ted Abernathy. Henderson wanders away from first. Abernathy sets, comes with a plate. Breaking pitch, foul to the screen for strike two. For Abernathy in front of Lanier, a ball and two strikes. Lanier back in the batter's box. Henderson is short lead at first. Now moves away a step. The pitch to Lanier. Ball strike three. Lanier argues at the plate. He's called out on strikes. So Abernathy opened up the inning by walking Henderson, but now has struck out for when he's in Lanier. Henderson's still on at first base, and the Giants will have pinch batter Johnny Stevenson. Stevenson will bat for Bryant. Stevenson, the pinch hitter, is one for five. On the season, is two for ten. Left-handed batter. Pinch hit successfully in his last attempt. Sunday in St. Louis, getting a double in the ninth inning to drive in a run. So Stevenson, a left-handed batter. Kenny Henderson, a short lead at first. Abernathy's pitch inside. Curveball for ball one. One or nothing count on Stevenson. On deck for the Giants, Bobby Bonds. 2-2 game in the top of the six. Henderson at first with two outs. Abernathy ready. Henderson bluffs, doesn't go, and Henderson fouls it up on the ground. Or Stevenson, rather. A count on Stevenson. One and one. Abernathy taking his time. Henderson standing right on the bag at first. Moves away now. Abernathy throws over there. Henderson back in as Ernie Banks makes one of his tags, in which he makes a big sweeping tag, even though the runner is standing on it first base. A 1-1 pitch to Stevenson. Swung on it. Missed for strike two. A 1-2 and two the count. Abernathy looking into Hundley. Anderson starts the lead. A one-two pitch. Swung on and missed and the side is retired. So Abernathy walks Anderson, then strikes out. Buenis, Lanier, and Bryant. Before the Giants in the six, no runs, no hits, no cut there's one runner left on. At the end of five and a half, score remains the Giants two and the Cubs two. last Dodger series at Candlestick Park was proved so exciting was only a preview of the thrills that pennant race baseball can provide. The Giants will be home for renewal of their battle for first place starting on August 8th in a three-game series against the Cardinals. Check your Giants schedule and make plans to come out and root the Giants on. The next homestand will feature big weekend dates against St. Louis and Chicago. Incidentally, those Dodgers have one more weekend at Candlestick Park, and for those of you who plan in advance, the Dodger dates remaining are Friday night, September 19th, Saturday afternoon the 20th, and Sunday afternoon, September 21st, which is also the Giants' popular annual Fan Appreciation Day. Better start thinking about those dates now. No other afternoon activity. 
All the games at night, although there are a flock of twilight doubleheaders. The National League, Houston playing two at New York, Atlanta playing two at Philadelphia, L.A. playing a doubleheader at Pittsburgh, single game, San Diego at St. Louis, Montreal at Cincinnati. The American League, Chicago and Cleveland, at Cleveland a pair, Detroit and Minnesota will be playing two. Single games, New York at Oakland, Boston at California, Washington at Seattle, and Baltimore at Kansas City. Frank Lindsay comes on to do the pitching for the Giants. Lindsay will be making his 39th appearance of the year, all in relief. He has won eight and lost six. Pitched 70 and two-thirds innings. Has eight saves, earned run average of 3.80. <laughs> Lindsay faced the four, five, and six spot in the Cub order. Ron Bryant went five innings, gave up two runs, full turn, on five hits. Struck out one and walked two. So Ron Sano... Grounded to third in the first and single to left in the fourth. We'll face Lindsay for the first time. Giants right-handed reliever taking over for the young left-hander, Ron Bryant. Lindsay winds and delivers. Breaking pitch for a call strike. Threw a slider up around the letters and got it over on the inside corner as Sano backed away. 0-1 oh, the count. Lindsay back to the plate. Fastball outside and low. Count is even at one and one. Nobody out, nobody on. Bottom of the six. Score tied at two and two. One one pitch to Ron Sato. Line deep to left center field. That'll be in between them and off the fence. Sano around first, heading for second. Now stops and goes back as Henderson makes a fine throw into second base. Sano rockets one off the left field wall, and Kenny Henderson, playing the ball very well, throws in a second base, and Sano stops at first. So Lindsay is greeted by a solid shot from the bat of Ron Sano. And Ernie Banks will be the cup batter. Banks 0 for 2. Applied to right in the second inning. Forced the runner in the fourth. Right-handed batter. Giant infield. Well, Fulani's now is batted in at third base. Ernie Banks might be up here to bunt. Ernie does not square to bunt. Fouls it to the screen for strike one. Banks now takes a look. Third base coach, Rube Walker. Santa was at first with nobody out. We're tied 2-2 in the bottom of the sixth. Lindsay set. Pitch the banks off the glove of Deese, but it stays in front of him, and Santa does not attempt to move up. It's a high inside pitch for ball one. game now belongs to Lindsay and Abernathy as both starters, Colburn and Bryant, are out of any possible decision. Sano away from first base, a short lead as Frank Lindsay gets set, pitch to Banks, fouled off into the seats to the right of the plate for strike two. That would nick the mask of Dietz, then went on into the seats. Oh, ball and two strikes on Ernie Banks. Giant infield, double play deep, outfield, swung around to the left. Bonds giving Banks about 95 to 100 feet of the right field line. Lindsay peering in at deep for a sign. Sato with the lead at first. Lindsay's pitch. Low and away for ball two. Lindsay and Banks go even at two and two. Lindsay nods okay. Sano leads from first. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Banks. Swung on and missed for strike three. Banks down on strikes for out number one. The batter will be the right fielder, Jim Hickman.
Hickman grounded to the box in inning number two that led off the fifth inning with a home run. Scott Slater scored another run to tie it up at 2-2. That's the way we are now in the bottom of the sixth. Right-handed batter. Again, the giant infield double play deep. Lindsay to the plate. A slider. Called strike. And again, the slider up around the letter. One count on the right-handed batting Hickman. Lindsay's pitch swung on, foul on the ground. Back to the screen for strike two. Well, Lindsay in front of Hickman, 0 and 2. Ron Sano at first with one out. Time taken at the plate by Hickman, who wants to smooth out the batter's box. He does. Now squares around. Santa with his lead. The 0-2 pitch. Bounds away from Deese. Goes back to the screen. Santa goes to second base. The ball is trapped under a chair, but Santa will hold it second. Bill Wild pitch charged the Lindsay. Out of a ball and two strikes on Jim Hickman. Sato moves up. Giants now have to play the infield deeper. It's a chance for the ground ball double play, all but eliminated. Lanier in behind Sato draws no throw from Lindsay, but sent Sato scrambling back, and now Mason cuts in behind him, and Hickman asks for time at the plate. One and two the count. Sano at second with one out. Square tied 2-2 in the bottom of the sixth. Lindsay to the plate. Slider called strike three. Hickman caught looking for the second out. The batter will be Randy Hundley. Clyde King and Ossie Virgil yelling something out of the Giants' dugout. But they want him to walk Hundley, I believe. They're trying to yell now. Now they've got the attention of Dietz and Lindsay. They want to walk Hundley. Randy Hundley will be given the intentional pass. There's ball one outside. Ball two. Lanier standing on at second base with Santo. There's ball three. Now ball four. So Hundley is given the intentional walk to set up the force play. The batter will be the center fielder, Don Young. Beat out of front for a base hit in the third inning. Singled sharply to left in the fifth. A young two for two. And he's maybe called back. Might be Al Spangler. Paul Popovich it will be. Popovich, a switch hitter. Popovich is coming over the Cubs. has been a pinch batter eight times and has five hits. Now Clyde King will run out to the mound. Popovich formerly with the Cubs, went to the Dodgers, then to Montreal for a couple of hours, and back to the Cubs. Jim Qualls loosens up on the bullpen. He'll take over in center field. So Bobovich, switch batter, will stand in against Lindsey. Overall in the season, Popovich at 298. Since coming to the Cubs, he's batting 352. St. 
Nano at second. Hundley at first. They lead away. Lindsay's first pitch. Low and outside for ball one. On deck for the Cubs, the pitcher Ted Abernathy. Rich Nye starts throwing in the bullpen. Which probably means that Dick Soma will be the Cubs starter tomorrow. Lindsay's pitch. Bound it slowly down the first baseline. Lindsay feels it. Tags Popovich on the line to retire the side. Popovich not too happy about the way Lindsay tagged him, but down number three. So for the Cubs in the six, no runs on one hit. No giant errors. Two runners left at the end of six. The Giants two, the Cubs two. Let me ask you something. If I offered you a chance to win 44 feet of friction tape, what would you think about it? Well, I wouldn't be especially enamored of the opportunity. All right, how about a run at five consecutive weeks' use absolutely free of a nuclear-powered toothbrush? I've got to tell you honestly that the prospect just doesn't hold a great deal of charm. Well, well then how about a comfortable beer? You struck a chord. Yeah, I thought I would. A big, round, beautiful, ice-cold, wet, refreshing, good-tasting, comfortable, Bergy type court. And all I said was comfortable. I didn't even have to say Bergy. Anytime anybody says anything about comfortable beer, you know he's got to be talking Bergy. Because Bergy is the comfortable beer. Because Bergy is the beer brewed with soft water. So it's easy to take, good tasting, and comfortable every time you taste it. Every bottle, every glass, every time. I gather you recommend Bergy to every beer drinker who's listening. I'll tell you how I feel about it. I even recommend Bergy to every beer drinker who isn't listening. Giants will have the top of their batting order to face Ted Abernathy in the seventh inning. Uh, there will be a new center fielder for the Cubs. And Jim Falls goes into play center field. Giants really had a chance to bust it open back in the fifth inning after Bryant, who was the giant pitcher then, beat out an infield hit, and Bonds doubled him to third. Nobody out. But Mason grounded back to the mound. The runners had to hold. Mays walked to load up the bases. Then uh, Geary come in. He came in, the left-hander. He struck out McCovey and uh, got Dick Deep to fly out on the three and two pitch. And then the Cubs came up with two in their half of the fifth to tie it. So that's where it is now, tied at two and two. And it's Abernathy and Lindsay, you guys who are dueling now. And Abernathy up here to face Bond. Bond has two doubles and three trips and has scored a run. Facing Abernathy for the first time today, takes a high fastball for ball one. Abernathy walked the first man he faced, Kenny Henderson, but then struck out the side. Pitch to Bond, high ball two. Each relief pitcher, Abernathy and Lindsay, came in to get the first man on and then get out of the inning without being scored upon. 2 0 count. Strike, two and one. Seven hits for the Giants, six for the Cubs. Each club with two runs. Pitches outside for three and one to Bobby Bond. The Bonds are leading off trying to get on here with Don Mason scheduled up next. Then Mays. Three one pitch to Bobby. Swung on, bounded to shortstop. On into center field for a base hit. Kessinger going to his left couldn't flag it down as Bond singles to center. And we'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. If entertaining your family with something to do on your day off is becoming a problem, I just might have a solution for you. Aaron Edwards here, Sunday mornings on... Don Mason up here now to bat left-handed against Ted Abernathy. Bonds at first. Stretch by Abernathy as Bonds has his lead. The pitch to Mason, who turns the bunt and fouls it. Strike one. Oh, and one K. 
count. Sato charging from third. Banks breaking off first base. Rich Nye left-hander. Phil Riggin a right-hander throwing in the bullpen for the Cubs. Strike one count to Mason. Bonds with his lead at first. Strike one pitch. Taken outside for a ball. It's one and one. Sato really right in on top of Mason. Ball on the strike. Don Mason batting with Bonds at first. Nobody out. Albert Athey takes the stretch and throws over to first base, but Bonds is back in. All right, and are ready to work to Mason. Mason turns to bunt, takes outside for ball two. Two and one. Giants and Cubs tied at two apiece in the top of the seventh. Giants really need this one desperately to get out of the slump there and on this road trip. They've lost four out of five, and three of those four they could have won just as easily as lost. Throw to first, and Bond gets back. Two two to one losses and a four to three to be yesterday in ten innings. Mason takes outside for ball three. Three and one. Abernathy behind three balls and a strike to Mason. And Don looks now at Ozzie Virgil. Three one count. Bonds with his lead. Three one pitch. Bunted down the third base side, foul. So it's a full count now to Mason as he's failed on two bunt attempts to get the ball in fair territory. And he will come back now, see what the giant strategy is in this situation. A full count, three and two. Top of the seventh, Bonds at first. No one out. Mason backs out of there. Looks down at Ozzie Virgil. Now back in. 3-2 count to Mason. Abernathy takes the stretch. Bonds leaves it first. He's running. The pitch is grounded to second base. Mason will be thrown out at first, but with the hit and run on, Bonds is safe at second, so it acts as a sacrifice, although it is not one. Keep this in mind whenever you're reaching for beer. Fergie's unique soft water brew is for refreshment that keeps right on refreshing. Reach for Fergie, the comfortable beer. The Mason grounds out on the hit and run. They sent Bond. Mason made contact. And Bond got into second. That would have been a perfect double play ball had not Bond been running. Willie Mays up here has grounded out, singled, and walked. Bonds at second with one down. Abernathy, the third cup pitcher. Right-hander in his stretch as Bonds leads away from second. The pitch to Mays. Outside for a ball, 1-0. 2-2 oh. two, two ball game, inning number seven. stretch again. Bonds lead. Mays lines one down the right field line. That's going into the corner. Bonds will score easily. Mays will go to second. He may try for third. He is headed for third. The throw coming in. Mays is going to be out at third. He is safe at third. He slid under the tag. Sato missed the tag at third as Mays slowed down coming into third. And Becker, or Kessinger's relay to third base, had Mays by plenty, but Mays got his hand in under the tag. Uh, Lon, I 
I believe that's the first time in his career I've seen May slide head first. Well, he just looked like he ran out of gas between second and third. It's a triple for Mays. The Cubs arguing vehemently. The throw was there ahead of Mays. There's no doubt about that. But Mays sliding head first, I think may have surprised Sato. And Mays got his hand into third base. And Sato must have missed the tag. But the Giants are in front on Mays triple. Three to two. The Rocher is wandering around in the middle of the diamond now. Going out to the pitchers now. Willie McCovey is due up, and Rich Nye may be called upon to pitch to him, and DeRocher kicks the rod bag. He's highly irate, as was Ron Sato. Kibler's call on the play was just that Sato missed the tag. So DeRocher is out on the mound wandering around. He has not called anyone in as yet. Mays had a curving liner into the right field corner. There was no doubt it was a base hit from the time it left the bat. Just a question of how many. Willie may have thought that he had third base easily. He might have thought that ball had gone so far into the corner that he was going to have a triple easily. Might have been why he slowed down between second and third. And then at the last moment, he saw that he was going to have to slide, and he went head first into third base. Rich Nye is called on. Here in the seventh inning. Well, that is a decision at third base that would have brought heated argument by anybody because the throw was there ahead of Mays. The call had to be that Santo missed the tag on Mays, who slid head first and got his hand on the bag at third. So it will be Nye, who worked in yesterday's game. Nye came in in the tenth inning to get the win. He Came in with two runners on and a run in in the tenth. After Mays had driven in a run that put the Giants on front three to two, as he has here now. He got McCovey to fly out. Deep beat out an infield hit to load up the bases, but then Henderson hit into a double play. And then the Cubs scored twice after two were out and the bases empty in the bottom of the tenth. Nye still has not taken his warm up. Mays is at third. Might have been why he slowed down between second and third. And then at the last moment, he saw that he was going to have to slide, and he went head first into third base. Rich Nye is called off. Here in the seventh inning. Well, that is a decision at third base that would have brought heated arguments by anybody because the throw was there ahead of Mays. The call had to be that Santo missed the tag on Mays, who slid head first and got his hand on the bag at third. So it will be Nye, who worked in yesterday's game. Nye came in in the tenth inning to get the win. He Came in with two runners on and a run in in the tenth. After Mays had driven in a run that put the Giants on front three to two, as he has here now. He got McCovey to fly out. Deep beat out an infield hit to load up the bases, but then Henderson hit into a double play. And then the Cubs scored twice after two were out and the bases empty in the bottom of the tenth. Nye still has not taken his warm up. Mays is his third. Base. 
today's paired attendance, 34,008. The Cubs over the million mark. One million fifty-six thousand and some. No, well, almost one million fifty-seven thousand. They're over all the time. Nye. Got his first win of the year yesterday. He's one and four. He makes his 26th appearance now. He'll face Willie McCovey with Mays at third. The infield is drawn in. McCovey has hit a home run, flying out and struck out. Now I will pitch from a windup. Mays getting a lead at third. Santo playing close to the bag. Swing and a miss by McCovey. He went for the curve and didn't get it. McCovey, with the bases empty, has been taking the first pitch. With runners on there, he's been swinging at it. The one strike count. May is about to now. Nye has got a pitch from a stretch. The pitch to McCovey is pop foul. He had a pitch to hit there and fouled it off. So Nye is in front of him 0 and 2. McCovey trying to get the ball into the outfield to pick up this run here with one out. He's the man that has to. The only man that can score Mays with a fly ball. If he makes out, then it's going to take a base hit or an error. Pass ball while pitch or something to get Mays across. Well, McCovey trying to deliver a sacrifice fly. Mays bouncing down the line at third, trying to force Nye into a mistake. Pitch to McCovey. Outside with a fastball at one and two. Mays is really taking a big lead with Santo moving over by third. Maybe trying to just force Nye to throw over there and maybe get a throwing error, but he's, he's really taking liberties. And now Nye bluffs the third, and Mays is complaining that he didn't step off the rubber, but he can bluff the throw to third. You just can't bluff the throw to first. Or, uh, you can bluff the throw to second and third. You can't bluff one to first unless you step off the rubber, of course. Low and away. Two and two count. Sano moving in behind Mays. Two two pitch to McCovey. Inside almost hit him at three and two. Mays at third base with one out. Sano keeping close. Mays getting a bigger lead at third. Three two pitch. One on lined into left center field. Williams will make the catch. Mays back. Here's Williams' throw to the plate. It's going to be close. And Mays fails into Hundley. Knocked Hundley down. The ball is bounced away, and Mays is injured. Mays has hurt his leg. Mays went sailing into Randy Hundley, and I think Mays has injured his left knee. Hundley was standing on the plate. Faking Mays, acting as though he weren't going to get the throw. Mays went sailing into him. Mays had the right to the plate, all right. Huntley blocking it without the ball, but Mays has injured his left knee. Mays scores as a sacrifice fly from a cubby. Mays is on the ground at the plate. Leo Hughes is moving his knee around. I don't know. It's hard to tell from here just exactly 
How about it? They're helping Mays to his feet. Willie is going to be assisted from the field. He, no, let's see if he is or not. They started to help him off. Let's see if he's going to be able to make it. He is limping very badly. Acting almost as if his knee were locked. and now he's walking towards the hang on, he's limping he's walking better now he's going to be all right I'm sure the two runs have scored in the inning it's a four to two giant lead but coming gets the sacrifice fly and Dick Deep will be the batter Mays come back from the dead before. I don't know if he'll go into the dressing room or not. He sits down on the end of the bench. He isn't going into the dressing room, so there's a possibility he may be out in center field next inning. Dick Deep up here to face nine. Here's the pitch to deep. Swung on and missed, strike one. Four to two, the Giants lead. A single by Bond. An infield out by Mason with Bond going to second. May is triple on the Covey sacrifice plot. Pitch now to deep outside for a ball. One and one. Giants four, Cubs two. Nice. Next pitch, a strike over the outside, one and two. Giant catcher Dick Dietz batting here in the seventh. Willie Mays is going to the dressing room now. Let's see. Clyde King went over to talk to him. Mays is going into the dressing room. Pitches outside for a ball. Two and two. Uh, Dave Marshall will be called upon to enter the arena. Two-two count. Two-two pitch. Deets popped it up into right center field. Coming over is Hickman calling for it, the right fielder, and he makes the catch. Side is retired. Two runs, two hits. No error. No one left off. And at the end of six and a half, going to the bottom of the seventh, the score of the Giants four, the Cubs two. Maybe it's because I'm so forgetful, but I've always admired people who have a good memory. You know, the ones who always remember appointments, always remember anniversaries, and most important, always remember to bring home the Bergie. Of course, the beer that's as refreshing as Bergie is mighty hard to forget. That's because Bergie is soft water brewed to give it a light, refreshing taste that goes down cool and comfortable. Comfortable, that's the key word. It'll remind you of Bergie every time. Lindsay has to work. Kenny Henderson goes to right field. Dave Marshall is in at left, and Bobby Bonds goes to center as Mays has had to leave the ballgame. 
And Al Spangler will come up to swing a bat for Rich Nye. Spangler, Kessinger, and Becker against Lindsay. Four to two, the Giants lead. Bottom of the seventh. Lindsay came on in the sixth, gave up a leadoff single to Sato, then struck out Banks and Hickman, walked Hunley intentionally, and got Popovich on a ground ball, which he personally made the put out. Pitch to Spangler's outside for a ball, left hand batter. Hitting 234. pitch. Fouled away. It's one and one. The Giants leading four to two. The Cubs batting in the bottom of the seventh. One one pitch. Grounded to second base. Mason has it. Throws the first. Spangler retired for out number one. One down and Kessinger, who has walked, hit into a double play and forced the runner. Will be the batter. outside. He's been hot with the bat. Kessinger batting left-handed. Swings and bounds one back to Lindsay, who goes towards first base to field. It throws to McCovey. And two men are down. And Glenn Becker will be the batter. He is one for three. He is single to drive and a run. Four to two, the Giants in front, bottom of the seventh with two down. And Frank delivers over the top to Becker to bust it foul, strike one. Say this about the Cubs. They do anything to try to get on base especially up at the top of the batting order or down at the tail end of the order where they can get on up in front of the big guys, Williams and Sato and Banks. Tough hitting bunch, the Chicago outfit. Breaking pitch outside to Beckert. It's one and one. Cubs is a team batting 267. Pitch. Check swing. Ball two. That must have been inside. It looks like a close pitch. Two down. Base is empty. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Bounded towards shortstop. Lanier charges. His throw to first in time. And the side is retired. No hit, no error, no one left on. We have gone through seven innings with the score of the Giants four and the Cubs two. It seems these days that everyone is publishing guides. You can find guides to restaurants, guides to theaters, sporting events, television shows, night spots, or shopping guides, sightseeing guides, amusement guides, guides to just about everything you can spend your time or money on. 
the guide that is the most complete, most useful, and most often referred to is one that you already have. That's the Yellow Pages. In it, you can find the complete listing of most every kind of product and service available in your area. Your own personal guide to shopping, selecting services, entertainment centers, medical and pharmaceutical needs, and a host of other things, too. The next time you need help in finding what you need, just remember, you already own the granddaddy of all guides, and there's nowhere you can find help faster than right there in your yellow bag. To go to inning number eight, Russ Hodges has the report from the dressing room on Willie Mays, and here is Russ. Uh, Willie was severely bruised. He bruised his uh, right knee, and his left knee was skinned. But uh, Doc Hughes is working on him now. There may be x-rays, but it will depend upon... Uh, he was undoubtedly stunned with the impact at home plate. Kenny Henderson gone up to the plate without a batting helmet and, and Clyde King calls him back. Regan has appeared now in six games in a row. But he is an excellent reliever, has 11 and 5, has worked 79 and a third innings. He has 10 saves in addition to 11 wins. He's the fifth pitcher for the Chicago Cubs to use today. Cubs still have their secret weapon on the bench. Wonderful Willie Smith. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Kenny Henderson. Swung on line down the right field line, and it's a fair ball. It goes into the right field corner. Henderson stretches out, going into second base with a double, and holds there. In a clothesline shot into the right field corner. Tito Fuentes will be the Giants' batter. first extra base hit of the day and the Giants' tent. Going shopping, you'll find the yellow pages of your phone book, your best guide to the products and services available in your area. Pointers followed by Lanier and then Frank Lindsay. Henderson leads. Regan delivers to Tito inside for ball one. This is the top of the eighth inning as the Giants lead the Chicago Cubs 4-2. to two. The Cubs have Williams, Santo, and Banks up next inning. Now the 1-0 pitch on the way. Tito swings and pops it high into short left. Billy Williams calls for it and makes the catch for out number one. Al Lanier, the Giants batter. We'll pause here for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. This is Don Sherwood saying that strength and health through sports. <laughs> Every morning from 6 to 9. in San Francisco. Tomorrow, Bye Bye Baby Bonanza will be worth $1,300. And we'll announce the inning at the start of the game. Lanier swings and chops one slowly towards second. Beckert has to hurry, throws in. And Frank Lindsay will be the Giants batter. Art Santa Domingo, the Giants statistician, is on his way up to the booth now, and he may have something specific about the condition of Willie Mays after he crashed into Randy Huntley at home plate. Lindsay the batter, and Henderson at third will be alert for a possible wild pitch. Big Frank waiting. Regan delivers to Lindsay, who swings on a high slider. Strike one. Well, you should see the size of the new apartments that are going up around Wrigley Field, the apartment building. Here's the next delivery. Outside for a ball. Wrigley Field, like... Stadium 
Oh, around a half million people are within walking distance of Wrigley Field. Now the one and one stretch, the pitch. Lindsay takes wide for ball two, and it's two and, two and one. Two balls, one strike. Bobby Bonds to follow if uh, and Henderson leads. The pitch to Lindsay is swing and a miss for two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Henderson down the line at third. Two outs. Bill Regan ready. Throws to Lindsay, who swings, breaks the bat, grounds it to Banks at first. Banks lots to Regan, and Lindsay is out. Based on a close play in the side is retired. Regan gets the foot out. No runs, one hit, no errors. One runner is left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Giants lead four to two. In about half a minute, a good freestyler can swim over 60 yards. About the same time, you can dial a call to any place in the country. Dial direct. It's faster. You know, Lon, it really is amazing when you think how simple it is today to call across country. I remember when it used to take several minutes to place a coast-to-coast call. I know, Russ. Now all you do is pick up the phone, dial the numbers, including the area code, and you're there. Don't even have to talk to an operator anymore. Fantastic. But I'm for anything that will give me a little extra time every day. Ah, Lon, it's an amazing world we live in. Maybe someday we'll be able to cover road games without traveling. Santa Domingo has returned from the Giants clubhouse, and Mays says that he's all right. That both of his knees hit Randy Hundley's shin guard, and outside of hurting, he'll be all right, and we hope he can play tomorrow. Speaking of Billy Williams, he will lead off, and he has a 19-game batting streak. He will be followed by Santo and Banks. The 17th cup to be used today. Lindsey winds and throws to Billy Williams. Ball one, high and outside. Four to two, the Giants are leading. I think Frank got the side out in the sixth and seventh. He throws to Williams, who slaps it foul deep down the left field line. One and one the count. Gene Oliver, or rather Nate Oliver, Gene Oliver. Willie Smith still available along with Heath. The one and one pitch. Williams checks the ball, fouls back to the stands, and it's one and two. Four thousand paid today at Senior Citizens Day. They've swelled the crowd to around forty thousand. Lindsay with the windup. The pitch to Billy Williams is taken low and outside, and it's ball two and strike two. Lindsay's had a couple of strikeouts since he came in. Two pitch to Billy Williams. Bounded high to Don Mason at second. He throws to Willie McCovey. It's out number one. And Ron Sato, who almost single-handedly is carrying this Cubs ball club in the power department, is up the plate now. He leads and runs by the 87 for Sato to 84 for McCovey.
He singled hard off the left center field wall his last time. He has had five hits in the series. Lindsay throws to Santo, strike a slider over the outside corner. Santo, five for seven in the series, has brought his average well over the 300 mark. Now Lindsay winds and throws again. Santo swings, nubs it foul to the right. Strike to the count. Young Ron, Ron Bryant started and went five very good innings before he was taken out. Not under fire. Number 10, Sato, guarding the plate. Lindsey Wine throws. Sato swings. It's a high drive to center. Bonds is back. He's under it. And he has got it for out number two. On a windy day, that one would have been uh, bye-bye, baby. Ernie Banks will be the batter. Banks struck out against Lindsay his first time, and he will be followed by Jim Hickman. Mike McCormick is walking down to the bullpen. I think Mike figures to be a starter in this series, or no later than Friday in Pittsburgh. The pitch to Banks, slider low for ball one. Four to two Giants, number 14, the batter. Lindsay throws again. Ernie Banks swings, bounds it to Fawadi through his glove in the left field. Fawadi did not charge the ball. It handcuffed him. So Jim Hickman will have a chance to tie things up as the Giants will have Ron Herbel throwing in the bullpen along with Ray Sedeck. So it's Mike McCormick. Hickman, who hit a mammoth home run in the fifth inning, struck out against Lindsay in the sixth. He got the first run home off Ron Bryant for Chicago. Lindsay throws, Hickman takes low. Ball one. Four to two, the Giants lead. The Giants have ten hits, the Cubs have seven. There have been no errors. Frank Lindsay with two down, throws to Hickman. Hickman swings, sends a high drive to left field. Dave Marshall is waiting for it, moves in. Almost misjudged it, but Wynn had it, but he makes the catch for out number three. No runs, one hit, no errors, one runner left. And at the end of eight full, the San Francisco Giants lead the Chicago Cubs four to two. Bobby Bonds will lead off against Bill Regan. He's had three out of four, followed by Mason and by Dave Marshall replacing Mays, who would have two out of three. Bobby Bonds, a right-handed hitter against a right-handed pitcher. to pitch to Bonds. Bonds led off the two-run rally last time. Bonds takes a call strike on the inside. Number 25, a right-handed hitter. And Regan comes in with a pitch. Bonds swings, dribbles it down the third baseline. It's a foul ball. Strike two. Davenport is loosening up for the Giants. will follow. Bonds trying to get on there to start something. And Regan looks him over. Bill winds and throws. Bonds nubs one to shortstop right off the fist and it's grabbed by Kessler. One down. Mason the batter. Mason one out of four on the day. A 
have driven in a run. Dave Marshall will follow. Don't forget, friends, dialing long distance direct is the quickest way to reach the number you want. You'll find instructions on how to dial direct in the front pages of your directory. Regan throws to Mason. Don runs up to Bunt, takes a call strike. the pitch. Outside from Regan to Mason. Ball one, strike one. Don hammered a solid liner to single when he drove in his run. He bounds one high to Kessinger. The shortstop throws to first in time. Marshall who had to stay out of a couple of games with an upset stomach will be the batter now. Batting average of 261. The calm before the storm as the Giants are batting on the top of the ninth. Regan throws. It's a bouncer or a ball one. 4-2, San Francisco leading. Regan's next pitch. Marshall hits it foul. It bounds off the retaining wall in front of the customers. McCormick, the only giant throwing in the bullpen. The Cubs have left-handed hitters left on the bench. They want McCormick ready in case they bring one of them in. Now the one-on-one -on -one delivered to Marshall, a high rainbow curve outside or inside for ball two. It was way out of the strike zone. Count two balls and one strike, the pitch. Marshall bounds it foul to Ernie Banks at first. Two and two now, the count. Big, strong kid, Dave Marshall. Regan Wines throws. Marshall swings and misses strike three. He's out. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Hold on to your hats. The Giants lead four to two. Jimmy Davenport goes into play. Third for the Giants. Randy Huntley followed by Jimmy Quo. French hitter. Hundley 0 for 2. Lindsay winds and throws to Randy Hundley, who takes it low for ball one. Lindsay has given the Cubs two hits and one intentional pass since he came in the game. He's worked three innings. He throws again. Hunley pops it foul. He fisted him that time, and it's a strike. Hunley limps a little bit as though he might have twisted his left ankle. The Giants defensively have Marshall in left, Bonds in center. Henderson and Wright. They have Herbal and McCormick throwing in the bullpen. Now the one and one pitch on the way to Huntley. Locked up into short right. Mason is back. Henderson comes in. 
Mason makes the catch for out number one. And Jim Qualls will be the batter now. Batting average at 239. Willie Smith is coming out of the dugout, but he will not bat for Qualls. He will bat for Phil Regan. Qualls, the left-handed hitter. The Giants lead 4-2. to two. Lindsay breathing deeply out there to face this left-hander. Not a power hitter, but he hits the ball. Here's the pitch by Frank. Ball takes outside for ball one. Big schedule tonight around the National and American League. The Yankees at Oakland. Here's the pitch. Qualls lines it to left field. Marshall is there. He has got it. Now number two. Willie Smith, who started everything yesterday, getting a base on balls, will be the batter. And he has the reputation of being able to hit a fastball out of sight. But with a two-run lead, Lindsey probably figures, let him uh, hit it out. Smith with a batting average of 280. Seven doubles, a triple, and eight home runs. Lindsay facing wonderful Willie Smith. Delivers to the plate. Smith takes high for ball one. One thing Lindsay doesn't want is to get that top of the order up there. Here's Lindsay winding. He throws to Smith, who takes strike one, Carl. Ball of a strike. One and one account. Frank Lindsay with his sign from Dietz. Delivers to the plate. Willie Smith takes low for ball two and a strike. Two and one account to Willie Smith, wearing number 25. Well, he has been a clutch man for the Cubs this year. Anderson deep and right, Bonds in center, Marshall in left. Lindsay throws, Smith swings, grounds it to McCovey, passing in the right field for a base hit. And the Cubs get the break they want. It looked like a routine ground ball. But Smith delivers again, and Oliver will run for him, and the Cubs will have used 19 players. Here will be the batter. And he was the key hitter yesterday, and he's the key hitter today. And Don Notabart gets up to throw in the bullpen for Chicago. Kessinger, a good batter, and he represents the tying run, and he'll cut his throat to try to get on there. Well, something short of that. Left-handed hitter, Nate Oliver, a runner at first base. Lindsay throws to Kessinger, who bounds it to Don Mason. Should be the ball game over to McCovey. The Giants have won it 4-2, to two, and we wonder if Santo will click his heels today. Out in left field. The Giants, in winning it, came up with four runs. On ten hits, no errors. And for the Cubs, two runs, seven hits, no errors. The winning pitcher, Frank Lindsay... And the loser, Ted Abernathy. Frank Lindsay, the winner, and he certainly deserved it, pitching four shutout innings. Now this is Russ Hodges for Lon Simmons and Bill Thompson, reminding you to stay tuned for the Giants Clubhouse, which follows, and inviting you to be back with us tomorrow for the Giant Cubs game from Chicago, broadcast time 11.10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Our engineers were Rich Smalley and Chuck Suggs, and the final score 
is the Giants four and the Chicago Cubs two. So fans, that concludes another Giants baseball broadcast. Today's game is presented with the best wishes of the Standard Oil Company of California and its dealers, who invite you to come to Sherman Island for a welcome change of scene. You'll like the spirit. And by Roos Atkins, the giant in men's clothing in the West. With 50 locations in the West and Hawaii, there's a Roos Atkins near you. Also by Berkey, the comfortable beer. It's soft water brew to refresh you and keep right on refreshing. Berkey. And by the people at Pacific Telephone who remind you when it comes to communications, we're here to help. This has been another sports presentation of the Golden West Radio Network.